guys welcome back to my channel it's Lauren and welcome to my updated girl talk and advice video I have a few of these on my channel already and I always love filming them and I also love watching these types of videos I went ahead and asked y'all on my Instagram any questions and advice you needed and I pulled some of my favorite and most asked questions from this like little Q&A so I can't wait to jump on in and answer your questions and give you some advice on some situations that y'all are having also if you hear any clicking in the back of this video our windows for some reason are rattling with the wind we just had a snowstorm here in New York City and for some reason we have just been having a rattling window so I'm doing everything that I can to try and muffle it so I'm not too sure if it's coming through on y'all's end hopefully y'all will just get used to it and it'll just be like part of the video but let's get going and have a little bit of a girl talk night tonight go ahead and grab yourself a little snack a silly little drink I have a lemon water right now because I need to stay hydrated I already had like my caffeine for the day and I really need to be pushing my lemon water so this is my drink of choice comment down below and let me know what you are drinking and or eating for this video whenever I watch YouTube videos I always need to have like a little snack I need to have like my whole setup I don't know if anyone else feels the same way as me with that there's going to be a lot of fun questions and like really detailed questions in this so I'm so excited I have a little laptop right here so if you see me looking down reading a question that is why have all of them pulled up right here and the first question is perfect for how I'm feeling right now the first question is what is your best advice for keeping positive about your body and dealing with your insecurities right now I am feeling so insecure I'm having a really bad like body image day and I feel like a lot of us can get caught up with body image especially around that time of the month and like right before then but a lot of us can struggle with this at any given moment of any given day one thing I love doing to keep a positive mindset about this is speaking positively towards myself and about myself whether that be leaving like little sticky notes on my mirror saying that I'm worthy I am loved I am enough I am beautiful or if that's just verbally saying that to myself also if I am having kind of like a mentally hard day about my body or about like my mindset or anything I also love going on Pinterest I feel like Pinterest is one of the only social media platforms or like apps that I can go on and I don't feel completely drained by it I actually feel really inspired by Pinterest I love looking up empowering quotes and kind of like just feeding my mind and myself like these empowering uplifting things when it comes to dealing with your insecurities that is going to look so different for so many different people for me personally I have to work through my insecurities in a lot of different ways one of those ways is journaling I haven't been prioritizing journaling as much as I wanted to this year but I really really want to focus on on that especially when it comes to my insecurities a lot of us feel like we are alone in the way that we think or the way we feel or the insecurities we have and the truth is is that we're not at all a lot of people feel the same exact way but for some reason people don't feel comfortable enough to share that especially online people will put on social media this huge like highlight reel and don't get me wrong I get that like you want to share your most positive amazing moments but I think it's really important to know that you're not alone and a lot of women struggle with insecurities and body image and even the most beautiful person that you follow on social media or is in your school or workforce I promise you they have the same exact thoughts that you do so I feel like the overall thing for this question is definitely knowing that you're not alone question number two what is the best way to balance having a boyfriend while also having time to yourself and spending time with your friend I think I talked about this in an earlier girl talk video I'm not positive but in high school I was one of those girls that I really prioritized my boyfriend over my friends it wasn't fully personally me I was actually in a relationship where the man was very very controlling of me and my time and what I did so in turn that meant that I lost actually a lot of my friends in high school like near the end of high school nearing graduation which is one of my biggest regrets because I was being fed all these things by this boyfriend and I think the overall thing and I know I know I know if you're like a younger viewer watching this you probably get told this all the time but I am one to say that it is so true never put a man or just like overall a significant other boyfriend girlfriend in front of yourself in front of your friends or in front of your family especially when you're first starting to date them or if you're in schooling it is never never that serious I don't know the exact percentage of relationships that actually make it out of middle and high school there are those ones that do but I think that the main thing is not putting a boy or your girlfriend in front of the people who love you and want the best for you I always love to 
prioritize time for myself. I love a good self-care night. And I live with my boyfriend now in this apartment. And so sharing a one bedroom apartment, it can be hard to have time by yourself, but Will and I know that we need breaks from each other. He'll go out and he'll talk to his friends. He'll go for a walk. He'll play video games. He'll want to watch his show. I love coming in the room and watching my own movie or having a bath, doing some self-care, making some TikToks. Anything that you find to treat yourself and spend time by yourself is very, very important no matter what stage of life you're in. Something I am really working on is prioritizing spending time with friends. I am just a very shy, introverted person overall, so it's kind of hard for me to take that first step to hanging out with friends, but when I do, I always have the best time. I love spending time with my friends. It's something you definitely need to prioritize. What is your self-care routine when you're experiencing that time of the month? <laughs> Another perfect question for right now. My favorite, favorite thing to do for self-care around that time of the month is taking a bath or a shower, whatever you prefer. I love putting Epsom salt in my bath and just like being able to fully relax. It also helps with my cramps a lot. Also the shower can do that as well, just helping you like calm down. I love lighting a candle. I love shaving and moisturizing my skin. If you're a self-tan girly, I always love self-tanning around the time of the month because self-tanner to me personally gives me like this boost of self-confidence. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about it, but the self-tan gives me a boost of confidence and normally around the time of the month, I don't feel as confident in myself. I don't feel as good about myself and I need that like little extra like mm, like something to make you feel better also I love putting on a matching pair of pajamas some nights I do just want to wear like a big t-shirt and some sweatpants but putting on a matching pair of pajamas is like a whole other level of self-care during the mornings of my period a lot of the time I'm just like really puffy so I'll do like my little gua sha I'll do my ice roller I'll do like eye masks or lip masks or something to like treat myself in the morning also something else is drinking warm lemon water I don't know if you'd really count that as kind of like a self-care thing Drinking warm lemon water in the morning has actually improved like how I feel in the morning to like a whole other extent I was one of the type of people I would immediately get up and make my cup of coffee before I had anything in my stomach and having the warm lemon water Basically kind of helps your body get going like after you've been sleeping like kind of waking up your digestive system I highly highly recommend that also I just drink lemon water like throughout the day It's my favorite way to drink water pretty much the only way I like to drink water I don't know why I'm like one of the people who like different I I can tell the difference between different waters. Can't do it. I have been loving these parade products lately. I picked out two different sets for the parade website and I am absolutely in love. The purple one I love wearing for like a fun little night out. I don't know about you, but if I have like a matching like undergarment set, I always just feel so confident and so good about myself. My favorite one though is this pink gingham set. First off, y'all know that my favorite color is white and pink and something that I love about parade is they have so many options of so many different vibes, aesthetic colors. So they will have something for everyone. This little bra is so comfy. I love wearing this lounging around, going out, running errands. This material is so soft and stretchy. I also love how it has this like little keyhole right there. The elastic band is also very stretchy and very comfortable up against the skin. Same thing is to be said about the underwear. These are so comfortable. I think these are essential for any girl's closet. The thing that hooked me with these parade products is definitely the quality of these. At an amazing price, I am always looking for something that is within my budget this feels like butter on my skin. I know for sure that this is something that I'm going to be telling all of my friends about and sharing with them as well. Parade also gave me a huge discount code for y'all. You can use my code NORIS40 for 40% off site-wide. If you want to have a little moment of looking forward to getting something in the mail, this is definitely something to buy. I'll be linking everything down below, including my little purple set, but this one definitely was like the game changer winner in my eyes. Thank you Parade for sponsoring this video. Again, be sure to click the link down below and use my code NORIS40. What is one beauty hack? that changed your life. There's actually two I'm going to share. One, I don't really know if this is a beauty hack, but always keeping a lip gloss or a lipstick in your purse or like on you at all time is so, so important. Your makeup can look so good, but if you don't have any lips on, mm -mm, it's gonna ruin the whole look. So definitely making sure you always have that in your purse. I personally, I am missing so many of my lip glosses. I went out to like clean out my purses and they were all in my purses. So always just have a lip product. The main beauty hack though is keeping like a little makeup puff like, you know, like the things that like you can apply powder with, keep that in your purse. Okay. Keep it in your purse because if you are out in the town or you're out on a date or you're just spending time and walking around a lot, you're going to want to blot your face and that can make your makeup look so good. Like you haven't even been doing anything. Doesn't have to have any powder on it. Literally just like dabbing it like on your nose, like on your cheeks. 
chef's kiss. What are some of your favorite places to shop for special occasion dresses like graduation or weddings? I went ahead and compiled a little list for y'all. I love shopping at so many businesses. A lot of these are small businesses too, so I'll start with those. Favorite small businesses to buy from is Hazel and Olive, Avonlift Boutique, Coco Lilies, and the Tiny Closet. For like bigger named places, I love Hello Molly. They normally have like pretty well-priced dresses. Also, Opali and Red Dress. For more of like higher end things, I would go for Revolve or Love Shack Fancy. Those are obviously way bigger price jumps, so it just depends on like what you're looking for, but those are like my staples. Like if I'm looking for an outfit, those are the places I'm looking for. Next question is your best heartbreak advice. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It has been several years since I've experienced relationship heartbreak but the main thing that I can say is you need to allow yourself to feel those feelings and validate that you're feeling those feelings obviously you felt a certain way about this person and while they may just be in for a chapter in your life you still have had significant memories with them and obviously you're going to miss them and it is a heartbreak experience I think when I first started experiencing heartbreak and like relationship issues I try to like condense it to a point basically acting like it wasn't that big of a deal. I felt like a lot of people around me were also very invalidating of my feelings. They were like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like trying to get me like to move on, not think about it. But I think that's not always the easiest thing that may work for some people. But I think letting yourself feel those feelings and work through them will help you in the long run. And especially the more heartbreak you experience, which is so unfortunate. Like whenever you start dating or seeing someone new, like it's going to be like your perfect fairy tale or it's going to end in a heartbreak and you never know. But giving yourself grace, giving yourself moments moments to feel the sadness. Life is full of so many emotions and experiences and moments and really just being present in that. There's something to be said about it. Obviously you want to live in the moment and you want to experience all the joyfulness, but you can't know what that joy is unless you feel that sadness. Next question is what are some of your favorite perfumes and how did you find your signature scent? I will say I feel like I've had a signature scent for different areas and eras of my life. Obviously I'm a Swifty. So the whole air is thing. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but certain perfume smells will bring me back to a moment in my life. And I'm like, like you like get transported there. It's like certain songs. Like if you hear a certain song, you're like transported to a part in memory in your life. That's exactly what the perfumes do. I will say the perfume that I have used the longest and most consistent is definitely the Chance from Chanel. It is such a good perfume. It actually was my best friend's wedding perfume and that's what hooked me on it. I think my friend got married in 2017. So I have been using that perfume since 2017 pretty religiously. I would say that's probably my signature scent. Like if someone smells it, I would think that like it would be, like if they're friends with me, that would be like what correlates it. If that makes sense. I don't know. That's how I am with my friends. I knew their signature perfume. Like the perfume that they wore all the time. My roommate Rachel would wear the very sexy like red bottle of Victoria's Secret in college. And every time I smell that, I just think of Rachel. I'm just like, this is Rachel's scent. What is the best way to stop comparing yourself to others online? I struggle with this. So many other people do this as well. We will always compare ourselves. I don't think there ever will be a time in my life that I don't compare myself to someone, even if it's just for a split second. I mentioned earlier in this video that a lot of social media is just a highlight reel for so, so many hundreds of thousands of people where you're only going to see the highlights and the good of their life. So obviously it's easy to compare what you're going through to like this huge highlight reel. Something that I have done on my social media is I will unfollow or mute accounts that I do not align myself with or or people that I don't enjoy seeing. If there is someone on social media that you, like anytime you see their picture, it just makes you feel bad about yourself. Why are we following them? I think that's the first step. It's like wiping your social media and seeing what encourages you and uplifts you versus what does the complete opposite. Again, I was talking about Pinterest, like finding encouraging quotes. There also are a lot of Instagram accounts that share kind of like girl boss encouraging quotes and I love following those. Also, I am a Christian, so I also love following like Christian girl Instagram Instagrams where I like see the word of God like on my Instagram too because I feel like that's not shown enough on social media. So whatever it is that makes you feel better about yourself, think about how often you are on social media and why you're comparing yourself to others on social media. It would be really great to have some sort of like uplifting encouragement on the app as well. How did you discover your aesthetic and the person that you wanted to be? I have actually never gotten this question before, I think in my life. And I love this question because I get a lot of DMs from girls saying, it literally makes me so happy. Basically saying that 
watching my videos, watching, you know, following my content or whatever, it has encouraged them to embrace who they truly are because that's exactly what I try to do. A lot of people have a stigma around the color pink and just being feminine in general where I thought that a lot in high school and like right after high school, but then it just got to a point where I just wanted to make myself happy and do things that I know that I loved. And it's the color pink. Obviously, as you can tell, it is pink. To me, I feel like we have a lot of social norms of like what a woman should be and what type of aesthetic a girl should be. Or depending on where you live, this is what you should dress like and these are the colors you should like and this is the vibe you should fit. And I just don't like that. I think that everyone is so unique in their own way and we need to embrace that more. I feel like discovering my aesthetic, I can't really speak fully on because I've always been a very, very girly girl. I've always been obsessed with the color pink, always just been obsessed with makeup and hair and just like the typical girly things which a lot of people people kind of hate on girls for but it was the moment that I decided to embrace that was when I finally became that person that I wanted to be like I had an image of like oh like I want to be like this confident girl and it's like a lot of the times confidence is a mindset and I don't think that you can be fully confident in yourself if you're trying to be someone else so be true to you be who you are meant to be and try not to fit a mold that other people make you feel like you need to fit into how do you deal with friendship breakups I feel like this is also another question that I answer a lot in girl talks and I can't fully remember what I say you years ago in a video like distinctly. I have gone through several friendship breakups and they suck. They're horrible and I feel like it's been worse since I've been doing social media because you share these people online, you share these memories and you put them out for other people to see where it's like for me losing a friend in like the day and age of social media is way harder than when I was in like middle and high school. I mean social media was still very prevalent but it was not near the extent of what it is today. In today's day and age everything is under a microscope. Even if you don't have a following there are still people who stalk you and look at your things and obsess over you even though you think that they don't people are like weirdos out there in general but like also there's probably people in your school or your work and a lot of the times I feel like friendship breakups are a lot harder than even relationship breakups friendships are a whole other level of connection and love for a person where when you lose that friend of yours it's really really difficult I think the main thing with friendship breakups is don't be afraid to say when you are in the wrong Wrong. like don't always think that you aren't in the wrong obviously certain things can happen and some people are just meant to be in your life for a season or a chapter for what reason we may know we may never know but definitely don't be too prideful to apologize to that friend and reach back out to that friend even if it's been several years and this friend has a big life event happen like they get engaged or they have a baby or anything of this sort or they just lost someone in their life don't be afraid to reach out to them and still be there for them even if you don't have that close of a friendship anymore extend the olive brand how have you made friends after you have graduated college and are now in your adult life can someone else give me some advice on this i will share a little bit is that i have been trying to do more things where i will meet new people i said earlier i am an introvert i am not the type of person that i'm just going to like go up to someone and just instantly like click and become friends like i'm not a very talkative person i know it's like bizarre because i'm talking to y'all like that's literally what i do for my career and my job but i am not like i, I cannot small talk like i always told my friends i was like i wish I could take a college course on small talk because I don't know how to small talk. I don't. Like, I am one of those people where, like, my friend Maddie, for example, we literally can sit on the couch in silence for hours, just like on our phone, watching a movie, doing our own thing, and it'd be completely fine. So, I'm just not one of those people who can, like, easily meet people and become friends with them. Something I have done is started a new hobby. I have started ice skating, and it has been so fun, not only for, like, my mental health and my physical health, but also for meeting new people. I have made several friends and I have a hung out with them outside of class no not yet anyway but I still look forward to seeing them every single week and I love making memories with them and we're in a group chat and we're planning on taking lessons the next semester and I really encourage you to start a new hobby because at least that's what I have done to meet new people <laughs> so far if I have any more advice I'll let you know the last question I'll be answering is what are your best shaving tips and tricks I've been waiting for this day finding a good quality shaving cream is going to improve your life so much so much also using a men's razor so much better than any woman's razor. Also something that I have discovered when shaving is I love exfoliating either before or after I shave. I normally do it before I shave. I either use an exfoliating glove or I use like a little exfoliating like scrub. Especially like on your legs. Oh, it makes your legs feel so good. I'll link my favorite body scrub down below. It is so nice and moisturizing. Going back to the quality of shaving cream, I have found the best shaving cream. Again, I will link this stuff down below. Anything I'm talking about, I'll link it down below. I use a different 
different shaving cream for like, you know what I mean? And my armpits. Whereas I use another shaving cream for my legs. And I personally shave my arms. I know it's like not everyone's cup of tea. I started doing that in high school. Will just noticed. Will and I have been dating for over four years. And he just noticed I have been shaving my arms for like several years. He was like, do you shave your arms? I was like, yeah. It's always a personal preference. That's also what I want to say is like, obviously you don't have to shave. Like embrace who you are. Do whatever you want to do. I personally like to feel like a naked mole rat at times. So that's just what I like to do. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you've made it to this part of the video, go ahead and comment down a little kitty cat emoji for baby L and a pink heart emoji. I hope this guys gave you some clarity on some things and maybe I answered some questions of yours. Like I said, I love doing this video pretty seasonally. So if you have any other questions or advice that you need answered, go ahead and drop them down in the comments down below. And I will do my best to either add them to my video schedule or answer you in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to join the family, you can click that subscribe button also. I love you guys so much and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye.